The decision to scrap the deportation plan between the UK and Rwanda has left a significant financial and social ramification. With Keir Starmer, the new UK Prime Minister, declaring the plan dead and buried, the £240 million already paid to Rwanda, uh, that Rwanda seems very reluctant to refund. Uh, and, you know, so where does this leave Keir Starmer? because the Rwandan government is clear. Let this be clear, they say. Paying back the money was never part of the agreement. Well, of course it wasn't. This financial outlay was part of the previous Conservative government's strategy to deter illegal migration, part of uh, Suella Braverman's absurdity to deport uh, asylum seekers to Rwanda. However, legal challenges and opposition including the Supreme Court ruling, declared the plan unlawful and has rendered the scheme inactive. So Rwanda says if the UK government has decided that the treaty is terminated and can not, no longer be implemented, then Rwanda takes notice of the decision and complies with it. This was not a loan given to Rwanda. This was money sent to Rwanda to carry out specific actions. These actions have been carried out. There's no reason why these funds should not, been, should not be returned. So Alain Muralinda said the United Kingdom has not made the request. The UK government has not said that if they that they would um, that if they terminate the treat the treaty, the funds have to be returned. And so therefore Rwanda is going to pocket the uh, the change. Rwanda has said that the funds have been used for construction and other preparatory activities related to the agreement for the funds that have already been transferred to Rwanda. First of all, it's important to say that these funds are not in an account in the National Bank or anywhere else. These funds have been used. That is why, first of all, I said that we had, uh, we had started to implement the treaty. Secondly, the agreement we signed did not stipulate that we should have to return the money. So the local workforce, I mean, this is where it gets really unpleasant. The local workforce, which built all these buildings to house the migrants on Suella Bravman's whim were paid a hundred and uh, were paid one pound eighty per day to do their building cheap labor and they they now face uncertainty as the scheme stops and this will negatively affect their livelihoods and despite this the Rwanda government remains open to participating in alternative migration solutions and utilizing the construction uh, the, the constructed facilities for other purposes. That's what we're told. Well, I think there'd be a very good idea for using the Rwandan accommodation to uh, look after those people who cannot be accommodated here, who have fallen foul of the asylum application and who uh, cannot be sent onwards to their home country, countries like Iran or Afghanistan. So maybe Rwanda is an option there. It's a long way away and it will be something of a culture shock as Suella Bravman claimed. It's some sort of deterrent. But there we are, you know, it is at least accommodation that exists. And there are rumours, there are rumours that uh, before abandoning Rwanda, the British government tried a new agreement with Armenia, maybe a project in Dilijan or something next to the international school. This would be as much nonsense as the Rwanda project, that hangover from Priti Patel, Suella Braverman, James Cleverley. I don't know whether this is their idea about Armenia or whether this is something new that's being proposed. Uh, the only country that is set up now to process migrant applications is Albania, which has an active and functioning arrangement with Italy. We should talk to Eddie Rama. We need somewhere to send these people if they are unable to be housed in the UK because they don't meet our criteria and therefore they need to go somewhere. And uh, if they've been rejected by the Home Office and they cannot return home. Botswana by the way, has also rejected any deal. Botswana's foreign minister, uh, Lemogang Kwape, uh, has said in an interview with a South African TV channel a couple of days ago that the British government had approached Botswana to receive migrants deported from the UK and that it has rejected the offer. 
If the Labour Party is looking for cash, which I think it will be now, then it might do best to look in the direction of Baroness Moan and uh, the £1.4 billion wasted on PPE. And actually, if you look at Labour's manifesto, Labour claims that it's going to spend £1.4 billion on operations, scanners and dental appointments in the NHS. Now, there clearly is a pot of cash waiting to be collected.